All right, here we go. It is 2020. I cannot believe it. Welcome back into another edition of the Happy Hour Tip-Off Show powered by WagerTalk.com. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Ralph Michael. Certainly hope you was a uh, happy and healthy uh, new year as we uh, look to January 2nd. And I can't believe it, Ralph. We're in the 20s. <laughs> the yeah. damn 20s already. And uh, exciting stuff because... I'm looking at the schedule, and I stopped counting, but uh, I believe there are 73 games in college basketball today in some way, shape, form, or another uh, loaded, uh, needless to say, here to start the year off conference play in full effect for 2020. And uh, it was uh, it was a fun new year. I mean, hell, it was a fun uh, New Year's Day yesterday. We had some college hoops, and, of course, we had some college bowl games, so it was a good day. Yeah, you know, as long as everyone made it through safe and happy, that's fine, and uh you know, uh, New Year's Day used to be an off day for hoops, but not anymore as they try to cram those more and more conference games in. It's it's time to get started, and that they did. Yep, it certainly is. Uh, and let's get started, of course, with some of the upsets uh, yesterday. And uh, last time we spoke uh, to you guys, I believe it was uh, New, Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, and uh, we talked about uh, some of these games here on the card, including the top one. And uh, I I thought New Mexico would be uh, it would be a little bit too much, but San Jose State coming out firing here, Ralph. And you and I were talking like, don't sleep on a five win fi uh, San Jose State team. They're actually playing some good basketball. Wyoming earlier, it wasn't their first road game or even their first conference road game. You know, from a stretch from December 7th to January 1st, they hadn't traveled. They only played four games. So getting back in the swing, going on the road, you know, I don't think they were looking ahead to Fresno because they don't have them for another six days. But uh, just a game where we've seen San Jose State in their third season. Uh, you know, the first season was horrible under the new coach with four wins. The second season was horrible with four wins, but they had some injuries. And now, you know, getting a little healthier and 5-10 and 10 after 15 games. Not wrong with that. And uh, this was a big one last night, like <laughs> hooping it up there. How about uh, the boys in your neck of the woods there? How about UNLV last night? Yeah, you know, earlier I thought in the game I, uh, I might go to the game. And uh, I didn't, and I missed a good one. So, uh, again, another situation where, you know, UNLV with a new head coach, taking over. We know what kind of success he had at South Dakota State and uh, has him playing competitively. So happy as far as a local person's concerned because, you know, I'll, I always catch a few NLV games this year and it certainly much more pleasant to go when the crowd's into it and they, they have the possibility to win, let alone being able to knock off the team that was the favorite in the conference. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, some individual performances, guys, uh, from uh, yesterday that are certainly worth uh, pointing out, including uh, uh, that Creighton-Marquette game. I, I guess we, you, you know, Tyshawn Alexander there, 21 points, eight rebounds. He had an assist, six steals, Ralph. I know a big, uh, a big favorite of yours. Uh, but I, I guess we saw what Creighton can be, which should be pretty scary to a lot of other teams. Yeah, you see two players making that, you know. So, you know, anytime two players are going to make the top of the sheet, that's certainly something you have to keep keep uh, track of because it makes a big difference when you have multiple scores or a, a one a one big time score. So, you know, uh, Creighton's a team that is is one of those that that's going to be around all year long. And you know, Jordan Lyles for Furman is the guy that we've had on the sheet again, forty yeah. points. And again, I, I don't know how many times we can mention Jaquan Lyle, the Ohio yeah. State transfer for New Mexico. And you see what he did. He, he had to play 39 minutes in that game. Yeah. And to have, you know, a 25-4-8-3-1, um, it just shows you, again, the, the 39 minutes, though, tells you that it's it's different if someone's going to play 25 minutes and, and they get banged up and you have to replace 25 minutes. Yep. If you got a guy, a point guard, who doesn't leave the game, that's the kind of player you especially have to pay attention to if he gets banged up. Uh, again, because you have to replace the full 39 or 40 minutes out of a game. And uh, I got to tell you, looking on this uh, on this list, how about Isaiah Miller, uh, UNC Greensboro? Is that nine steals? Is that what I'm seeing, Arrow? That's a uh, that's a guy you would probably draft first, man, in any uh, in any lineup, isn't it? Yeah, well, it had 31 <laughs> points in 32 minutes with nine steals. Uh, yeah, I, 
I don't know how many games. There's not many games where you see nine steals. No. I mean, no. you know, I'm sure there's a couple of here, but man, to have to have a potential double double with steals in the category. <laughs> yeah. Impressive stuff there. Impressive win, too, by uh, by Greensboro. And then, of course, there were some uh, covers yesterday that uh, that we'll talk about here. And uh, the biggest one over there, Ralph, uh, your, your neck of the woods, you talked about it, UNLV, 23 and a half points. Uh, they end up uh, covering by there. Pretty good. Creighton and Marquette. Um, and, you know, that was a game we talked about saying we, we weren't sure what the health was going to be. Of, uh, of the predominant scorer there, but uh, ultimately I don't think it was going to make a difference one way or the other. Yeah, you know, they, they had they had some guys banged up, and, you know, obviously everyone played for Creighton, and, and it sure showed. Mm -hmm. So uh, they went out, and, you know, they're, they're not as fast as they had been in the past, but, I mean, they're a top 100 team, but, boy, are they efficient on offense. Yeah, and how about Wichita State, East Carolina? Kudos to them for hanging tough. Uh, didn't win, but they uh, they certainly uh, kept it within uh, within reason. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive when you lose the game, but you're still one of the largest covers. Now, granted, it was a lighter card, but right. it just goes to show you, you know, that East Carolina team um, – Playing better. I, I moved them up several times in my power ratings already. So uh, they certainly have my attention yep. at six and eight. Uh, you know, this is a team that last year was 10 and 21, and they started the season eight and six. So they ended up only going two and two and 15 or something like that down the stretch. So to go from that two and 15 finish and now. You know, they beat Campbell, they beat Charlotte, they beat Maryland Eastern Shore, they beat Eastern Kentucky. Teams you're supposed to beat, right? but that's the next level. You know, when you're a bad team, you lose the teams you should beat. When you become a middle-of-the-road team, you beat teams you should beat. You lose the teams that you should lose to, like, right. you know, Wichita State on the road. But solid performance for them. They've upped the tempo a little bit, and um, – they're getting some breakaway baskets, which they hadn't been getting. So, you know, they're a team that, like, as I said, I've moved them up a couple times in my power ratings. And how about the the SMU South Florida game? Uh, that was, uh, you know, that line at 126, Ralph, for the score to hit it over 20 points like that. Uh, you know, SMU, I guess you, you can expect that. But uh, I, I, 140, almost 150 points in that game is pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's an SMU team that, you know, scored 85 the time yeah. before. So, yeah. you know, their tempo was very slow to start. But, you know, that Georgia game they played prior to that was double overtime. And I think they got they were both in the mid 80s in, in overtime. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's that's like a third straight game in the 80s for them. So. Perhaps he's gone a little quicker. I haven't watched an SMU game on tape to go, and I like watching, you know, teams to see if anything has changed. Um, but they were also just incredibly efficient. When you look at what they did, you know, the reason they scored in the 80s was, well, because they shot 23 of 30 from right. two-point land. So yeah. <laughs> if you're getting a lot of easy baskets and you're getting layups and dunks, yep then the 80 doesn't mean you're playing faster. So that was clearly the case in, in yesterday's game, but the game before wasn't that way. So that's just a team we'll keep an eye on. Yeah, and and talk to me. What a difference a year Wofford makes, huh? Uh, going from a team that uh, could drop 80, 90 points on you, bomb away from three, and then yesterday they are a 45-point uh, uh, under here making the list here, Ralph, against uh, Eastern Tennessee State. I just uh, – they're just not the team they were a year ago. I think people need to realize that. Yeah, well, you know, he, he's got them playing as slow as any. They're, yeah. they're in the bottom 20 or 30 now with, with uh, tempo. And, you know, it, you got to – that's a new coach. You yep. know, Jay McCauley's there. So uh, anytime you have a change in style – you have to pay attention to the coach and you have to see, you know, what style he's going to bring. So he clearly has slowed them down more than they have been in the past. Yeah. Now the team, how about Colorado State, Nevada yesterday too, Rod? That was a game they were expecting an awful lot of points from. A little shocked with, uh, with a 22 point under. Well, Nevada's a team that all new starters, new yeah. coach, and, you know, you're trying to learn new systems. And yes, you know, their pace had been more, but uh, they're a team now. Again, you get into conference play, and we talk about it. It's a different ball game. You may have wanted to run a faster pace offense, and 
you know, it, it's it's a situation where, you know, we know Steve Alford ran one of the fastest offenses in, in UCLA. Right. But now you're playing conference opponents, and, and that's a different story. There's familiarity with you. you. You're playing a Colorado State team that, you know, doesn't play slow. They're, they're middle of the road. But you get that feeling out period and there's a little more importance to possessions and perhaps you take an extra pass and all of a sudden you start finding games like that. All right, guys. And of course, uh, we like to talk some uh, some trends and angles. We'll get to the market here in just a second, let you know uh, just a loaded card here today. So we'll let you know some of the movers and shakers, some of the uh, the big moves here in the market. But talk to me about a couple of trends and angles today, Ralph, on this card. Well, uh, you know, uh, as we usually do, a couple sides and couple totals, and uh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about two of these teams that I'm giving with trends and angles, Joe. Later on, uh, let's remember that the Oregon Ducks are now 21 and three against the spread their last 24 games. Mm -hmm. So that's something that just has to be mentioned. And, you know, uh, so and Purdue at home is another mm -hmm. team we mentioned, 51-24 and 24 against the spread at home. So strong, strong home courts for those two. Uh, Northern Florida is 11-1 and one against the spread on the road as well. And a couple totals. Uh, this is going to be part of my best bet, and we're going to talk about it, so you're going to hear a lot about this Minnesota game. Minnesota 115-1 and one over under their last 17 road games. Uh uh, they're one of the lowest Temple teams. Mm -hmm. UL Monroe, 35 and 11 over under at home. So you got a long term. And then Utah, you know, people perceived Utah as an under team, but the last couple of years they really haven't been. And Utah now 12 and 1 over under at home, their last 13 games. So the market, interesting uh, enough here, Ralph, has uh, there's a lot to choose from, obviously, here tonight. But I'm going to start out on the West Coast in uh, in your area because uh, we've got, a, of course, a line flip here. And anytime we do that, uh, anytime we see that, we try and uh, and figure out why. A team that we, uh, we have talked about, both teams, uh, before. San Diego taking on Loyola here uh, tonight, Ralph. Uh, opened up with Loyola as a favorite of uh, one and a half to two points. It's now completely flipped. Uh, where San Diego is a two-point favorite. The total is holding strong, but that's a pretty big flip there in a short period of time between Loyola and San Diego. It is. We're not sure how much money it's going to take to move a West Coast Conference game. Uh, you know, I have the game at pick, so it doesn't surprise yeah. me it's gone one way or the other. So, you know, the thing to remember, though, you know, a four-point move from one and a half to two to two and a half isn't the same as three to seven, you know. Right. so. You have to put it in perspective that you're still a, within a basket either way compared to moving through several several hoops when when you have it in this smaller favorite range. Talk to me about uh, another game kind of off the radar route, but Rice and Marshall. Uh, Marshall, we haven't had a chance to talk about them uh, a little bit, but they're getting an awful lot of love. Opened up as a six-point favorite. I'm now seeing tens across the board here, Ralph, taking on uh, at home against uh, Rice over here. Is there... Uh, and I'm it's a lot. It looks like most of the bets coming in here on Marshall. What are we missing here? Anything? You know, I don't know. I had that. I had that uh, uh, power rated right, and mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I don't know if there's injuries for Rice, and and I don't want to speculate because you know that kind of number is a key number. But right. um, you know, I I just think perhaps you know Marshall off a good win against Duquesne and Cleveland, right. you know, showed some life beating them as a dog, winning 83-61. So um, I'm a not sure if there's a situation there. there. Yep. You know, obviously when, you know, when you have as many games on the board, you want to try to read as much as you can. But basically what I do through is I look where I have some power rating differentials and then start breaking down those games. I didn't have a power power rating differential from that game in the beginning. So uh, I, I didn't catch catch any injuries if there right. were any in that game. And I'm looking and I don't uh, I don't see any listed either, but uh William and Mary taking on Hofstra. Now Hofstra quietly has been uh pretty darn good here, putting up a whole bunch of points here, Ralph, in their uh, in their season. They opened up as a six point favorite. Uh I'm seeing uh eights, eight and a half, so I'm seeing that continue to be push up against uh William and Mary in this game. That's no surprise. I mean, I have I have them as the better team at home. So, yep. you know, in this price range, no problem with it. You know, Mil William and Mary coming off uh, um, 
a win against Elon, but the Elon, a bottom of the road team. You look at William and Mary, and you know their five losses are to teams they should have lost to, with the exception of St. Joe's, but that was on the road. Right. And all their wins are teams that were worse than them, with the exception of Wofford. They beat Wofford earlier this year, and perhaps that Wofford team isn't as good as we thought. You know, so. Um, I agree with that line move. What about uh, we're a couple of totals here that seem to be moving the other direction here? UCLA, Washington here now. At UCLA, let's face it, we know uh, not exactly great. Still going through the growing pains a little bit there. But uh, the total has really dropped down here. Opened up at 143. I'm seeing 137 now here, Ralph, uh, on the board. So uh, maybe a little overestimating for uh, these two teams to put up some points here tonight. At least the market thinks so. Oh, I, I'm not surprised at that at all. I mean, Bruins go from one of the fastest paces to one of the slowest paces with McCronin. Yep. Washington, you have Mike Hopkins, the Syracuse disciple, playing the same zone, the two-three zone of Syracuse. Uh, no surprise that that game's come down. Uh, then talk to me about that because this I, this is going to be part of my plays later. But uh, talk to me about the Dons here tonight, Ralph. St. Mary's and the Dons. And it opened up at 150 and a half, and boy, that's that's gone. I'm seeing 145 and a half now here as far as the total. And listen, St. Mary's is confounding to me because of the tempo they play, but yet, Ralph, they, look at the overs in St. Mary's games here in the last couple. Like, what what's going on with St. Mary's? What am I missing here? Well, they're still playing slow, <laughs> but but you know, you look at you look at their opponents, Joe, and. You know, they have yet, they have not, you know, in the opener against Wisconsin was the only top 50 defense they played. Right. I mean, San Francisco, nowhere near that. But, you know, you really haven't played shutdown defenses. And, you know, you play a team like Seattle, mm -hmm. who, you know, had nothing to lose and running with them. So, I. You know, people are so accustomed to St. Mary's being so slow, and yes, they are slow. <laughs> right. They still have a tempo of 340. Right. But when they, they're efficient, they're not playing another slow team. Right. Then they just, you know, they they just play they, better. They I mean, pour it on. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of it. You know, I've only watched bits and pieces of a couple of their games, and you know you have leadership now i mean when cuz when jordan ford plays point guard right. it really sets up their scoring more i mean he goes back and forth between guards but you know the point guard passes a lot but when ford's point guard their offense does speed up and he's not their main point guard that's tommy coon i think it's tommy coon um as far as first names concerned but when he does play i think that's part of the reason him being that senior leadership back there does play quicker than sometimes they normally do and uh one final one here on uh on the board ralph and uh another uh team out on the uh, west coast actually two teams on the west coast uh, talk to me about pacific and pepperdine here an interesting uh battle because this one keeps going back and forth. I mean, talk about 50% across the board here. The line hasn't moved. The totals moved a little bit down, but uh, it just seems to be kind of split down the middle between Pacific, I think, you know, we'll say is 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 a pretty darn good team. Pepperdine has actually played and been able to put up some points with Arizona. I, you know, what do you think of Pacific and Pepperdine here? Because the public seems to be 50-50 across the board. Well, you know, it's one of those weird matchup games, Joe, that you have Pacific, who's 12 and 4, and you have Pepperdine, who's 7 and 7. You know, the difference is Pacific at 12 and 4 has played the number 350 schedule. Right. So let me remind people there yes. are 353 <laughs> teams. So only three teams have played a worse <laughs> schedule. Um, but with that said, I mean, they went on the road, they came here and beat. UNLV, that same UNLV team that just knocked off Utah State, and yep. they went on. They went, you know, they went on the road and beat Long Beach State. Not that they're good, but they still went on the road and beat them. And um, you know, all their other wins are ugly. UNLV is the only team in the top 250 that they face that they beat. So, mm. you know, that's the issue with them is that, you know, if UNLV is the best team you faced and they're they're the only team under 250. Then there's some concern. Three fifty uh, minus three and a half. By the way, Pepperdine in that uh, in that battle here. So, 
All right, Ralph, you don't no shortage of teams to choose from for a dog here. Did any one of them uh that jump off to the uh on the page for you? Yeah, I you know, I was close to using this as a play and I just didn't get there. You know, it was tough to say I have faith in him or not, but I am I am clearly going to fade USC. Ooh. You know, you're looking at a team that is 11 and 2 and they've only played one road game. And that was against Nevada who mm -hmm. had five new starters and a new coach and that game was November 16th. You're now going on the road playing Washington State with their new head coach. Remember Kyle Smith came over from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They've cashed. They've won six straight games. You know, they're not as good as USC, but, you know, they've played USC and USC is the same team. USC is now playing this Kyle Smith team for the first time. And, you know, Washington State has, has momentum. No good wins. You know, New Mexico State's their best win. But with USC only playing their second true road game and their first road conference game and Washington State having a lot of love, um, you know, and USC having, you know, a Sunday game against Washington on deck, who uh, they clearly perceive as as a challenger, then uh, I think the spot's right for, for Washington State to pull the upset. I love that play, and I got uh, I got one too. I'm looking Conference USA, Ralph. I love UAB here tonight, uh, getting two and a half, but I love them on the money line. Uh, taking on, uh, listen, this is a team that has given just about everyone that they have played fits. And, you know, they've managed to hold their own against uh, Kentucky, Texas, Memphis. I doubt very much they're going to have problem handling uh, Charlotte here. Now, it's on the road for them, so I guess maybe that's why I'm seeing the two and a half points go the other way. But they just beat a pretty good uh, Duquesne team and on a neutral court. I, Charlotte lost to East Carolina. So, uh, to me, I think this is going to be a very – it's a great money line opportunity here with UAB and uh, the unders probably also taking a look at in this one. Yeah, I mean, UAB has won one road game. They they play Troy in their opener, and they mm -hmm. won that by a point. You know, but, you know, they went – you went to Kentucky and you lost by 11, and you went to Texas and lost by 10. So, no, you didn't win on the road, but to go to both of those venues and cover – is an impressive thing because it, it gets your kids ready to play. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, they had a couple neutral games just before Christmas at Alabama State and Duquesne. So, um, you know, n neither team has played a, a tough schedule, although UAB named a couple guys that, you know, I said are, are good teams. Right. Um, the rest of the guys have been pretty poor, so we're going to learn a lot. Also, revenge spot. They lost to Charlotte in this spot last year, so they, uh, they've they got that going for them as well. And, of course, uh, we've got a couple of games that we uh, that we like to highlight here. I don't know if there's a uh, a situational or something in the uh, in the meantime during these games or something that you want to talk about, Ralph, as we – Well, uh... you know, my, my situation was going to be the same with USC because okay. I don't know how many times we've talked about those first conference teams. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I just combined those two. And uh, time and time again, we say, well, look, it's just another up, uh, just another upset with a team playing their first conference road game as a small way favorite. So um, it, it clearly fits into what we've said the last each of the last couple of weeks, Joe. All right. So then let's talk here a little bit about some of these uh, marquee matchups here tonight. We'll start with. How about Oregon taking on uh, Colorado, which uh, is a very interesting matchup. Colorado laying uh, one and a half here, total right around that 138 mark. Uh, Colorado 11-2 off to a great start this year, Ralph. They won four games in a row. They just beat Dayton neutral court, I believe, 78-76. Um, but they're not great against the number, Ralph. Six, six, and one against the number. Two, four, and one at home. Meanwhile, Oregon number four team, 11 and two. Way more impressive. They're ten and three against the number here. So what uh, what gives in this game tonight? Well, you know, I will say this. I'm just looking this up now. I should have had this done. But the road team, the home team, has gone six and zero straight up in ATS the last three years. So 
you know, does it make sense? Absolutely. Oregon going to play in the altitude and Colorado going up to Oregon. And so, you know, to win and cover, it, it certainly makes a lot of sense that it, it is a home dominated. I, you know, I like this Colorado team. I've talked about them in the past. I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Oregon, Oregon to me is, is a top 10 team. And they've done absolutely nothing wrong. And until they do... I, I just have to feel I back them. I mean, you don't go. What did I? What was the angle? Twenty-one and three against yep, the spread. That's correct. Um, and you look at this season, and you know your losses are to the Zags in overtime, and then the next night you lose to North Carolina by four points. So coming off that overtime one-point loss, yeah. and so, they had Cole Anthony then, by the way. Just yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know, and then <laughs> they were also tested on the road. They go into Michigan. They win yep. that game outright. So. You, you know, I, I didn't use Oregon. They didn't make my card because this is a first conference road game. Mm-hmm. They've only played one true other road game. That was that Michigan game. But in a pick em type situation, even though Colorado's won at home the last couple of years, and even though I love the Buffaloes this year, and even though, you know, uh, Tad Boyle's got him playing well that they could win the Pac-12 the Pac-12 and that wouldn't shock me. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're that talented where they have the shot to do it. I the eye test to me just says Oregon is a slightly better team. Yeah, uh, Pritchard and Duarte, high school teammates too. By the way, guys, uh, it, it was funny. We remember, bowl, you know, Bowl Bowl. We talked about Oregon last year. You know, it's a guard-driven team right now. It's a totally different animal, but yet they still play ridiculous defense. The one weakness, I guess, with Colorado is they've got a vulnerability against quality shooting teams, efficient shooting teams here. Um, And they're not very – I think Northern Iowa lit them up for like 57 or 58% from the field. You know, they don't contest twos very well. This is everything that they have a problem with. Oregon seems to bring to the uh, to the table and and might be better at. Uh, either way, I'd also lean to the underness. I do think both these defenses uh, will come to play, and and I'm kind of with you until Oregon loses this kind of situation. I, it's tough to say I'm going to pass on Oregon getting points, Ralph, even if it's just one and a half. Yeah, you know my concern with Colorado is their turnover percentage. It's mm. like it's like two it, they're in the two 200 low 200s. Yeah. And you know you you're splitting point guard duties. McKinley Wright's been there, you know, and then when their backup comes in <laughs> um Koontz, I believe. Yep. Uh that that's when they could get in some issues. So you know, we'll see in conference play if they can solve some of those turnover issues they've had. Yep, and of course, uh, the other game here tonight, guys, uh, keep an eye on. Also, I think it's going to be a great game, uh, and I'm uh, still trying to figure out the line. doesn't make any sense to me, but you've got a uh, Minnesota team heading on the road here, Ralph. Big Ten matchup against... Our friends over at Purdue here. And listen, the Golden Gopher is not a great start to the season, but really starting to come into their own. We've talked about how battle-tested they have been with their schedule. And, uh, yeah, they're really starting to they're really starting to show the versatility of this team, and they're really starting to come together. I think they've gotten uh, three straight, uh, three covers. I know they beat my guys over at Oklahoma State. Uh, they were an underdog in that game, and they completely blew them out of the water. So... Uh, they won here last year on the road in Purdue, so they know how to win here, but they're getting seven and a half, Ralph. What do you think? Well, yeah, Joe, I, I did, I'd be remiss to, to not let you start because you said I can't believe the line. Yeah, so finish I, that statement. I, I really can't. I just I don't understand this is that you got a team that knows Purdue. It's not it's you know, yes, it's on the road, but they've already had experience in winning there. Uh, to me, the Gophers are a better offensive team, certainly as of late. Uh, seven and a half points seems to be a monster number to me for a matchup. I think that is much closer to a point or two than it is seven and a half. I don't know if I'm missing something though. Well, you talked about revenge. You know, let let's remember double revenge because Minnesota yes. knocked them out of the Big Twelve championship. So good, good point. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's a little more important with Purdue. But yep. uh, I will tell you this. You know, I talked about that angle, and part of the reason I found this angle is because. I have three plays up at, at Wager Talk, 
And this is one of my actual plays. So I am double dipping, Joe. We're going to talk about it here, and I'm going to use it as my best bet as well since I already bet it and I had my customers bet it. And, you know, uh, the, I think the total opened up, what, 28? Yep, 128, and yep. And it's now 33. So at 28, I wasn't interested. There was only a basket of value for me. But when it came up to 33, mm -hmm. I I really I started to get interested. And I looked, and I can understand why it went up. Because you look at some of Purdue's games this year, and they look much higher scoring than they normally are. 79 against Green Bay and 93 against Chicago State and 97 against Central Michigan. But what do those three teams have in common? Well, they're three of the top 35 teams in the country as far as tempo goes. Mm -hmm. Those three teams are number 21, number 34, and Central Michigan is number nine. You now have that Minnesota team that's 242 in tempo. Right. That's 115 and one over under on the road. And Purdue themselves, again, 353 Division I teams. Purdue is number 340 right. as far as tempo goes. You look at you look at Purdue's two Big Ten games this year. They played Nebraska 70 to 56, mm. 126 total points. They played Northwestern. 102 total points. It was 58 to 44. Right. They're a slow paced team against a Minnesota team that likes slowing it down on the road. That to me, it's just going to be a war. And I think there's a lot of value, obviously, to use it as a play under 133. Yeah, it's interesting. I know uh, last year, guys, by the way, Minnesota put up 75 and 73 against this uh, Purdue team. So uh, I just I can't get over that seven and a half. And uh, I do like it. I think without. You know, we, we've talked about it before. It's just a different team without Edwards knocking shots down late for Purdue. It's just they miss Carson Edwards, man. It's not an easy guy to replace. And uh, the Gophers, uh, you know, pretty good team here this year. I think they're a sleeper in the Big Ten. Uh, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how this game uh, plays out here, Ralph. So as far as uh, best bets go across the board, Ralph, which game are you going to stick with here? I'm going with that. Like I said, I'm You're double dipping go. and using that Minnesota-Purdue game under the 133. Yep. And uh, I got there's one other game, too, another uh, crazy line that, uh, Ralph, I think Dayton was the game. Uh, the Dayton Flyers, of course, we know one of the best mid-major teams that we have, guys. Taking on a LaSalle team here tonight, laying double digits in this game. I think they're ranked 20th now, Dayton, in the country. They're 11-2. and two. They're on a two-game winning streak. They beat North Florida on Monday. Uh, I like the Explorers, Ralph. I mean, they're they're in this game. What nine and three now on the year? They've looked impressive. They're five. They got a five game winning streak going on here. They've won three of five by double digits. They can handle their own too. I think double digits is a little excessive uh, in this game for Dayton, especially on the road. I like LaSalle here to cover this game. Yeah, you know, I'm sure LaSalle's better than they were last year. And I'm sure it's not hard for them to remember. Now, you're, you're probably not going to find more disparate results than those last two games. <laughs> last year, LaSalle beat Dayton at home 71-53. to 53. Right. And then in the tournament, it was 70 to 39 Dayton's <laughs> defense shut him down so yep. I guess you're probably going to remember that game that you played back in March that you scored 39 <laughs> points against this team yeah hey listen at least they're at home so I'll take the points I got uh, I got no problem I got no problem with that but it is going to be a loaded card here tonight guys a lot of fun and of course uh, Rouse plays up and available right now over at wagertalk.com all you guys got to do is get there go to the Cal sports page he's got everything bowl games uh, college basketball games uh, all day ready to go all you have to do is just uh, press the button right now at wagertalk.com also at Cal Sports LV make sure you're telling him on Twitter so it's a loaded night Ralph should be a lot of fun here watching how this is all going to unfold couple bowl games as well gotta love gotta love when you get some afternoon bowl action to be watching and love. during happy hour you know I'll still be working Joe we're going to go shoot wager talk videos 
you will be what on a lounge chair on a beach with the girl fanning you with a Pretty giving much. you a mai tai, and you have this little TV in front of you yes. watching bowl games. Yes, those little umbrellas. I have quite the collection of them, Ralph. I can tell you that right now. Get to wagertalk.com, guys. Come back and join us again tomorrow. We'll break it all down. Whatever happens tonight. Plus, we'll take a look ahead as to what is on tap heading into the weekend. So, Ralph, appreciate the time, my brother. Enjoy the games here today, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll talk to you in 23, bud. Good luck, guys.